Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can the dark triad traits be detected in someone's face? Now I'll be using a number of articles to create this video and I'll put the references for those articles in the description for this video. So when we talk about the dark triad traits, we're talking about three traits that can appear together and they're usually subclinical, meaning they don't have anything to do with mental health treatment or psychopathology. The three traits are psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. So with all three of these traits, we see manipulation of different types. And then specifically with psychopathy, we see traits like being callous, unemotional, pathological lying, having a lack of empathy, remorse, or guilt. With narcissism, we see arrogance, a sense of entitlement, being envious, having fantasies of success and power, feeling special or unique, and it also has a lack of empathy component. And with Machiavellianism, we see someone who's ruthless, has a cynical view, and disregards conventional morality. So you can see there's some overlap, quite a bit actually, between these dark triad traits. And there's this theory that you can detect the dark triad traits just by looking at someone's face. Now we're not talking about facial expressions. That would make it a lot easier because there's a lot of distinctive facial expressions aligned with some of those characteristics. But here I'm talking about emotionally neutral expressions. If somebody has an emotionally neutral expression, can someone detect dark triad traits in that person's face? So we see a number of studies on this, as I mentioned before. There's a 2011 study that found that people could reliably detect the dark triad traits in people's faces. There's another study in 2018 that attempted to replicate the 2011 study, and they found that people could only reliably identify grandiose narcissism, which is the type of narcissism we would see in the dark triad. But they could not identify psychopathy or Machiavellianism. Now these studies used computer-generated composites of faces, so not the faces of individuals, but many faces brought together using computer software. And again, we have a difference here with psychopathy and Machiavellianism. So there's some consensus that with emotionally neutral expressions, narcissism may be detectable. And of course, what they're talking about here is the shape, texture, and structure of the face. Without the expressions, that would be really, really all you'd have to go on. And this could be genetic, so it could be just that the way it works with genetics, that someone's narcissistic and they also have these other characteristics in their face. Or it may be that the facial structure and other features lead to somebody being more narcissistic. But really, if we look at these two studies, I'm still a bit skeptical that this is actually a reliable finding, a valid finding. Again, you didn't have good replication from the 2011 over to the 2018 study only the narcissism component really stayed in place. And looking at some of the other statistical properties in terms of the results, I'm not convinced this is really an excellent finding, that it's highly accurate. Now there was another study published in 2018 that looked at a similar question. Instead of all the dark triad traits, they wanted to see if just narcissism could be spotted. And they had an interesting finding in the study around facial features. So the theory here is, in this particular study, is that the eyebrows are indicative of narcissism, specifically thicker, denser eyebrows. And what they found here is that individuals could more reliably spot narcissists as long as the eyebrows were in place, again, using computer-generated composites. But when the eyebrows were missing, when they were taken out using the software, individuals could no longer reliably spot the narcissist. So this is really supporting this idea that the eyebrows indicate narcissism. So one of the theories with this paper would be that narcissists must selectively alter their eyebrows to appear more attractive. And we know that narcissists do tend to make changes in appearance more so than non-narcissists. For example, they tend to wear more fashionable clothing, expensive clothing, clothing that tends to be more stylish. They tend to be more organized in terms of their appearance, neat, and they tend to be more attractive, again, because of changes they make to their appearance. Again, due to changes they make to their appearance, not necessarily attractive genetically. Not that way, just 
by the changes they make, again to clothing and other areas. So do all these studies kind of settle this issue? Can facial structure, and specifically eyebrows, reveal narcissism? Well, I think these studies are interesting, and they do bring up a lot of important topics for future research, but the short answer is not really. And the problem here really becomes around the statistics we see featured in the results section. The effect size of eyebrows and facial structure is really small, and there's no getting around that in these papers. So specifically looking at just the study with the eyebrows as an indicator, the eyebrows really aren't a usable indicator for detecting narcissism, again because of this small effect size. So let's consider how this works in another example. Say that you're looking to buy an automobile and you're concerned about the safety and you're comparing one car to another car and one of the vehicles is more safe than the other. And then you look at the safety statistics and you see that, let's say the car you're looking at that's safer is a four-door and the car that's a little less safe is a two-door. So you look at these statistics and you find that that particular car explains 1% let's just say 1% of the variance in safety. So it can only account for 1% of the variance in the actual safety you would experience driving on the road. And perhaps the other car accounts for half a percent of the variance. So both of these vehicles have a very small effect size. Yes, one is safer than the other. One would be a better choice, all other things being equal. But what you're talking about in terms of all other things here would be 99% of the variability. A lot of other factors are affecting safety. Does an individual drive intoxicated? How many years experience they have? Do they drive in safe conditions? Is the vehicle well maintained? Are they driving in the daylight as opposed to night? There's so many other indicators of safety other than that four-door car versus that two-door car. Again, in this example, and these aren't real numbers, I'm just using this as an example. So yes, you may choose the safer car, but it's really not impacting safety that much. And that's what we're really seeing here with the eyebrows as an indicator for narcissism. Yes, there's a significant finding, meaning the finding here that people could reliably identify narcissism with eyebrows was statistically significant. It probably didn't happen by chance, but that doesn't mean the finding is important. And that's really the difference between statistical significance and effect size. If you look at ways to detect narcissism, behavior is a much better predictor. Seeing if somebody has all those characteristics, like they're arrogant and have a sense of entitlement and tend to manipulate other people and have a grandiose sense of self-importance, those behaviors are much better predictors than what type of eyebrows they have. And the same logic can really be applied to those findings in terms of facial structure. Yes, facial structure may give some indication as to who is narcissistic and who is not, or what levels you may expect to see. But it's not a good predictor. Behavior is a much better predictor. What happens with a lot of these articles, this eyebrow article, for example, is that individuals put these in blogs and videos just looking at the central finding, that people can identify narcissists using their eyebrows better than they would be able to by chance alone. But that's not really the whole story. These different blogs and videos are created saying that you can spot a narcissist with eyebrows, but they're not understanding the mathematics, the statistics in these articles. And I see this actually as a trend with a lot of articles. There'll be one finding, but no explanation behind that finding. And that finding's put out there as if it's true, and as if there are very few limitations or no limitations. So really these are just simplistic interpretations of really complex results and this can lead to problems. So do we have a really definitive result here in terms of facial structure and eyebrows and narcissism or dark triad traits? No, not really. Again, an interesting area of study, and I'd like to see more articles on this topic, but I don't think we really have something that we can apply in the real world with these findings. Now, of course, this is just my opinion. I know whenever I talk about narcissism and dark triad traits, there are a lot of different opinions out there. If you have any thoughts on facial structure, eyebrows, or other facial features that may point to narcissism, please put those in the comments. As always, I hope you found this description of the dark triad traits and facial structure to be interesting. Thanks for watching.